Oh. I see oh. You, I see you just dropped in. Hello there. Hello there for part two of the vlog. All right. So today, a couple of different topics. Um, I want to speak pretty loud because the microphone is so far away. But uh, honestly, um, um, I want to talk a little bit about, let's, let's talk about this blade. Just picked it up from Seattle Edge. Um, Albert, Albert Edmonds, great guy. Um, <clears throat> honestly, you know, be a master of your craft. This guy is the epitome of a master, a master of his craft, uh, a person who pursued his passion, and you can see it in his work. Now this blade's from Tanvir, um, a supplier of mine. Great blade, great blade. Okay, it's a Damascus steel, all right? And if you guys don't know Damascus, I ain't gonna explain it, look it up, Google, that's what the Google's for. Because if it's on the interweb, it is true. It's on the line. It's on the line, it's on the net. So uh, a couple things, Tanvir sent this to me. Um, the packaging, uh, it got damaged, so there was a, the tip got uh, bent, and so I brought this to Seattle Edge. They honed it down. I asked for a back edge. This is a recurved blade. It's a great blade. I mean, the feel, I mean, the handle, this bone right here, okay? Um, actually, that is Looks a like an antler, antler. Of some sort. Yes. I'm not sure. Great once. hilt, um, just awesome design. Uh, Ariel, can you go in the back of the camera and let me know if I'm coming in too close? I'm going to try to bring this to the camera. Is it good? See that? Okay. So this blade, it is wonderful. It just feels so good in your hands. All right, so that's that. Seattle Edge, thank you. Albert, um, www, or his email is seattleedgesharpening at gmail.com or www.knifesharpeningseattle.com. Great guy, quick short drive from the east side. Um, he also recommended Ballastol. Sounds like Balisong, but Balistol, multi-purpose wipes. So you can use this about eight, let's say about eight blades maybe yeah, for one so wipe. Eight, so the packets are like 10. 85 cents. Great, great, great. There's good here. for, it says. And it's also eco-friendly, so you can put it up to your nose and not be like, Ugh. Yeah, he did say that they, uh, some of the wipes or oils that you can use for high carbon steel tend to get a little smelly. Uh, he said these are not, they, it also is eco-friendly, eco multi-purpose, firearms, leather, knives, tools, locks, uh, wood, any marine type equipment. Yeah. So you can use it out there on your boats. I know Washington, everybody's got boats. Yeah, that's, that's gonna take a lot of Metal work to do your boat. Metal and, uh, and rubber. Okay. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, Firearms, black, black powder. Stand to the side and just see if you got the frame on that. You can see that? Boom, yeah. Let's see if I can. Right there. There you go. Good. There you go. Ballastol, I expect uh, a check in the mail, <laughs> um, or at least free wipes. Uh, ten beer. Treat you good, brother. So keep you know sending good. Up. You know keep sending up. good blades. Keep making good blades. He said even from Pakistan, he doesn't get very, he's he's heard of some of the blades, Damascus blades, not being as good quality. So this is actually decent. All right, anyway, we'll leave that there for decor. Leave it out. Yeah. So anyone who messes with the interview or the vlog will get chopped in half. We just had a seminar with the Grand Tuhan, Leo Gahe. Um, great seminar. Again, <clears throat> let me just emphasize some things because uh, I don't want this to be a 10 minute vlog. Lots of repetitions from the source. The man himself, who uh, is the founder, the source, the one true source for Pikiti Tershakali, the guy I visited in the Philippines, um, in Bacola, training for two to three weeks at a time. Um, and there's nothing to be said about muscle memory, okay? Uh, also digging deep inside of you and just, just pulling out that warrior spirit. Uh, true warrior, um, a, great, a, great, a great fighter, a great teacher, and, um, and actually my relative, so that's kind of cool. So. Um, other than that, uh, we had um, we worked on some things, you know. Worked yeah, a lot of knife, a lot of double knife. Uh, worked some empty hand. Uh, we worked on um, single stick, double stick, the whole gamut, you know. So the the two days from ten to like literally ten to four, um, a lot of information. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, 
every year I'll be hosting him, so you, you guys need to mark that summer towards the end of June. Uh, and I want it to be a regular thing. So this is the second time he came out, he had a good amount of showing. Check out some of the videos out there, all right? Um, so let's talk, let's talk a little bit about um, what, what, you know, I, I usually go with the flow on what, um, what the topic's gonna be on, you know. Um, probably as it gets towards closer to August, I'll have uh, Sean and myself do a little demo and kind of give you a sample of warding defense system. Um, because we get closer to Trilogy of Steel. Trilogy of Steel, things like that. Whatever's on the, I mean, you know, we have Muay Thai seminars. Sometimes we'll, we'll get, get into BJJ flow. But speaking of BJJ, all right, we've got one of our fighters. I won't name any names. But um, what's cool is you learn, as an instructor, you learn a lot from your students and the students learn from you. All right, so one thing I want to talk about is mindset. And, and actually, in the fight game, uh, whether it's, I mean, you know, if, if, if Sean and I were toe to toe and I, I had my blade and just anything about his demeanor and his spirit just kind of just gives me a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of a clue of where his mindset's at, I won. I won that fight. And you know, GT calls this the metaphysical, but, uh, but for some of you, you, you just, you know, you could call it a bluff or a, but it really is kind of a, a, a minding the spirit of somebody, minding their, their, their posture, their demeanor, their mindset. And once we even touch hands, you know, if I feel a certain energy, I can t tell that this this person's mine, okay? Uh, what do I mean by <clears throat> Jeff, stop texting me. What I mean by that is this. Um, you know, and this is a great learning experience, you know. Um, I had one of our fighters just go hard with, uh, with a couple of students, and so I went with that person, you know. So if I can feel your energy and this energy of kind of like what, whatever you want to call it, whether it's frustration or you're thinking about things, um, you got to kind of dig in deeper than that and not allow allow that to 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 uh, be, be portrayed in your physical sense your mind is a projector okay and the mind is a powerful thing let me tell you an example um sean what time did i start training with gt after we had lunch and we still trained then sean came over it was around what uh, nine? close to 9 30 10 o'clock nine right yeah. for literally hour and a half, hour, hour and a half, for two hours, whatever, and we lost track of time. GT, Grand Tour was constantly showing us moves that were, were pretty physical. We were throwing each other, a little groundwork, dumpak, okay? And he would say, 10 more. And kind of just phase off a little bit, and then look up, say 10 more, or go again, keep going. Um, you gotta suck it up, you just gotta work through it. And, you know, if I would shown that, if, if I was in a fight and I, I, I was thinking certain things in my head, and it exhibited into my body or it, it, it came out and manifested in my movement, then as um, the opponent would catch on to that. You know, you see it in sport, you know, you see the the, ref, the other corner yelling, oh, he's tired, look at his hands, he ain't got nothing, he has no punch, he has no power. If that gets in your head, now you're fighting two battles. You're fighting the battle of the physical right there in front of your opponent, and then next you know you are fighting the second part which is the, the battle of your head so I highly suggest that as part of your training as a fighter or a martial artist you get in touch with yourself you get in touch with your mind and that game you play within yourself you know um, and then embrace parts of you that will make you better um, a lot of that too some people call it flow state if if we're flowing and I can't, we can't we don't have a lot of room here Sorry, there's a class going on over there, but if, if we do a quick, uh, uh, Errol, how's, the, how's the, the, the video? Real quick. Yeah, Ariel. It's good. Can you see us? Yep. Okay. If we're doing sabaya, all oh. right? Okay. And there's a flow state, and you just, you're just feeling it. I'm feeling his energy. This is awesome because now we're in that our body, our minds, our muscle memory, everything's connected. I can... <laughs> I can close my go, eyes. Man. There you go. I can feel that. I'm flowing. See, so I mean, you know, and you can look it up. Google flow state. What do people mean by that? How many minutes am I in? Ten. Ten? Nine forty-nine. Oh my gosh! I have to cut this video in half. That's okay. 
Okay, so, um, you know, if, if, if you look at uh, flow state and what it's about, and you look at mindset, you look at training, you look at skill development, constant repetition, you do your 2,000, 10,000, 5,000, 20,000 reps, half, half a million reps, you add that in and you become more well-rounded. But these are just facets of all training. Um, if I want to develop Sean into the person he needs to be, you know, we, we will develop his strength. You know, uh, uh, GT has his own way of training. You get cannonball training, uh, sledgehammers, uh, steel pipe swinging, and just getting that pop, 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 your ones and twos down. Uh, mindset training, putting, testing yourself, and, and test yourself against people who are going to push you to that limit. Um, tempering one's body and spirit, um, and then actually then creating a, a place of where you are in that state of mind and in that flow state where it doesn't matter, you know? Whatever Sean throws at me, I can just deal with that right there because my body's reaction. If my hands are here, I can do that. It doesn't matter where my hands are. I can deal with it either way. I can deal with it either way and break that. Wow. So, as you get more comfortable, that confidence develops, and then now you're that opponent on the other side, and then you're feeling them out. You're then imposing your will. You're then monitoring their demeanor, their spirit about them, and that fight's been won. And because of that, as you grow in your experiences and you come across different uh, events, and you know, you, we can get a little more spiritual and talk about life events and whatnot, then you know how to deal with it because your prior threats that you've experienced are now have been overcome and you know how you know the feelings you, you know the threat you know if i haven't dealt with a punch and oh uh oh, it's constantly you know let's let's go to contact me I'm like okay that didn't feel good okay that didn't feel good you know i mean how many times will i do i need to keep getting hit till i'm like you know i that's kind of maybe i should do something maybe i should move it you should move my head, maybe do a combination of both. So then after a while you become more acclimated and, and, and comfortable. You can just go boom, fast as you can, pop, fast as you can. I even knew where my range was at. So I didn't even I didn't move to the left, I didn't move to the right, I didn't even parry it. But then that's that that's that level of expertise. Like, oh my gosh, you're good. You're like Guru Sifu Grandmaster. What's that you call it? You know, um Perceptual speed. Perceptual speed. Yeah. Maybe, so, uh, so when you yeah. when you when you master that, people are like, man, that guy, he's like, sixty-five years old, but he moves so well. Or, well, how is it that he because he's had ten thousand reps, or she doesn't matter. They've he, seen a lot. They've I mean, seen ten thousand strikes coming at them from this angle. At one point, doing this ten thousand times will give you a perceptual speed, uh, uh, an understanding of. The, the, the lines, yeah. you know, and like you told them, bisecting lines, you know when to bisect the line, you know when to, to deal with the threat. And because of that, is it really a threat or is it just part of your body and your muscle memory and something you just deal with? And because you're so relaxed and calm about it, it tears down the fighter in front of you who's like, okay, I'm going to kick your ass. And oh, they, start, they, start, a... they start getting, this, this is what happens. And just like a video game. Boop, 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 boop. And their their, their health him. level, their health level, <laughs> and then finish him, kill. So I, I I hope that this has helped you. You know I wanted to talk about Seattle um, Seattle Edge, um, some of the cool wipes. Talk about training. I mean it doesn't matter. I mean the, that 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 experience that happened today was a it was a grappling uh, situation, but it doesn't matter. It could be stick. It could be boxing. It could be Muay Thai. It could be anything. It's, it's about fighter mentality. You know, we are It doesn't even street. need to be fighting. It could yeah. be athletics. I mean, um, if I could interject for a yeah. moment. I remember I played lacrosse in college, right? And I, uh, we were playing this one game against this one team that was that was really good. And my, my coach matched me up with their number one guy. And, uh, you know, first, first chance I got, he had the ball. I whap, bang, 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 right on his wrist. Ended up breaking his wrist, <coughs> but I imposed my will as a defenseman onto my opponent so much that he didn't want to hold the ball or, or or dodge or attack the goal at at all. He was just a pawn amongst the very like 
stagnant, stale offense, right? Where the offense flowed through him, I stopped, I put a damper on that. I stopped the flow right where it started, before it even started, mm -hmm. right? Like, you as an athlete, right? Because our jiu-jitsu, our jiu-jitsu players are athletes, our fighters are athletes, whether it's in the ring or on the mat, it doesn't matter where it's at, you're, you're an athlete, right? Even you warriors out there, that are fighting for our country that we believe, like I believe that you know this. You have to impose your will upon your opponent, no matter who they are, where they are, what they're doing. You have to let him know, let her know that you can't do anything to stop me. I'm moving through you. That's, that is imposing your will and that is what we want, right? That is what you should want as an athlete. And that comes through training. That comes through repetitions over and over again, a thousand times thousand reps perfect reps all right that is what that thousand rep principle that is what that repetitive muscle memory is going to get you don't do it till you get it right do it till you can't get it wrong right those are the techniques those are the things that we need to implement in our mental game that are going to make our physical game so much more alive and so much more uh you know real you're going to breed a different result after that. People are going to not want to roll with you or, or spar with you because you've imposed your will so much to the point that they can't, they can't handle it, right? They think, hey, man, can you tone it down? Like, bro, I'm just doing my thing. You know, I'm just in my flow. You impo impose your will on someone. That is what, that is what breaks them. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Um... <laughs> um I lost my train of thought, but um, what, what Sean was saying was, um, you, you know, when when you when you take on these these experiences uh, as uncomfortable as they are, um, you can notch your belt, and you can keep notching your belt as these experiences or threats become more uh, apparent, um, commonplace. Then it's no longer a threat; it's just something that you're used to. Yeah. Um, I was first; I was a new trainer. Like, you know, playing the training world. I was a new trainer. The guy said, have you ever trained a dragon boat racer? I'm like, no, but I can get you there. And that's, and I wasn't lying to him. I, I was <clears> honest. <throat> I No, I haven't. But I'll get you there to the best of my ability. After all, movement is movement. Did my research, applied fundamentals, fundamental strength training to this person. So strong and powerful in their legs that they were dunking a basketball. Um, I didn't know he was trying out for a team. Um, and he made the team competed in China and got a silver. So, wow, I am now a Dragon Boat Racer trainer. Notch my belt. Bink. Now, if, if, I, if I shied away from it, if I didn't accept adversity or take on higher ranking people, mm -hmm. get submitted, tapped out, or get smacked with a stick or take on these things, these situations, I would never learn. Then, then at one point, if you're gonna grow in your art or grow in your profession, your craft, you've gotta experience that. In order to move forward because obviously that person has something we don't know then you got to experience that so then you can Step up keep up. that experience and put in your put it in your database and then attack it where am I at a time 15 boom where 19 19, 19. Wow. okay <laughs> Whew. okay so anyway that's that's all I have to say so you know accept it uh, grow with it and yeah Peace out, Warriors Strength Martial Arts.